guys, this is Tara with Kitten Sweets and Tarot, and today I'm doing a video response to My Simple Path, and she created a hashtag, and the hashtag is uh, Tarot Cardamancy First, and it's only five questions, so I thought it would be really fun to kind of jump in and do this, uh, but before I do that, um, since I know my friend's death is going to be watching, I just wanted to let her know that I'm wearing the beautiful earrings uh, that she had sent me all the way from Belgium. Um, and also I've got her awesome calcite that she sent me as well, just kind of in my hands. As I do my videos, I always like to hold on to stones because why not? Question number one asks, uh, how old was I when I first, or how and when did I first find out that I had a love for cards? I think that goes all the way back. Um, gosh, I was probably, um, had probably just started elementary school maybe. So I was probably in like maybe kindergarten, first grade. Um, but I found a deck of cards in my house, not like tarot cards, but it was just, uh, playing cards. Um, and I loved the feel of like shuffling them. And I loved the idea of shuffling cards. I liked, you know, I shuffled cards all the time and I had like a little, like Hello Kitty purse that, <laughs> which is weird. I mean, like I totally don't have Hello Kitty purses now. <laughs> um, but I had this little Hello Kitty purse and I had my playing cards um, in there and I would take them wherever I went. Um, I even put playing cards on the spokes of my bicycle because I liked the way it sounded. I don't know. I just liked having cards uh, in my hands. And at some point I would look at the cards as if I could define and divine the future using cards. And which is strange because I hadn't been um, exposed to tarot or oracle cards, um, let alone anybody in my family um, that used them or maybe even knew what they were. If they did, they didn't tell me. Um, so, you know, I just, I, I really like them. And then uh, we had moved, um, gosh, when I was about six or seven years old um, to Chula Vista, which is where I did the majority of my, my growing up. Um, and I had moved from La Mesa here in San Diego. And um, there was a deck in the house that we moved into, which was my grandparents' house, you know, so we were renting from my grandparents. Um, and it was an old maid deck. I don't know if you guys remember it. It's, it was, it was about, well, I guess you could say Oracle sized, <laughs> um, in front of me right now. I'm kind of messing around with my wisdom of the golden path. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, and, um, I liked shuffling the old maid cards and what old maid is it's it's a card game um, and you know you don't want to get the old maid card um, I, I, it's not like go fish but although I liked playing go fish but I loved card games you know um, I never really understood poker but I just liked like all the kid card games um, and even if like other like board games that I have came with cards like I liked just looking at the pictures and I liked shuffling them and I liked imagining that what I saw in the picture and I especially loved my old maid card deck which my mother made me give to the goodwill and I was so upset because my mom's like you're too old for old maid <laughs> um and there was a there was a person kind of like this on every card and I liked just looking at the cartoon person and I liked pretending like I knew who they were and that they could give me messages which is you know odd also if you're wondering why my hair looks a little different um every well every six or seven weeks when I go to the salon to go get my hair done um my uh well it's my friend that does my hair and she loves straightening my hair she loves giving me share hair so it's literally so <laughs> long right now it's like right past my butt when you straighten out all the waves and everything so so yeah I've got my share hair it's when it's all glossy like <laughs> Question number two, how old was I when I got my first card deck? So I'm assuming they're talking about tarot or oracle cards. Um, I would say that I was just out of high school. When I was in high school, I was using the tarot, tarot decks of uh, friends of mine. And then when I got to college my very first year, um, I had a little bit of allowance money kind of saved up, um, which was pff, totally blown my very first year. It was like blown on books and school supplies and things like that. But with the little money I did have um, while I was in Barnes and Noble, you know, buying things that I needed for college, um, I found the, um, what's it called? The Farber, um, 
a tarot deck where it, it's got these beautiful like collage images where it's like using like lace and glitter and old pictures and some of you may have seen it it's um it comes with this giant book and it's kind of like a beginner tarot deck kind of you know if you pull this card in this spread look up this number you know on this page and you know it'll it'll tell you what it means um so yeah so i was probably around maybe like 18 18 and a half maybe just before i turned 19 when i got my very first tarot deck question number three how was it first getting to know the cards ah uh, with that very first deck which i never connected to it was really difficult mostly because uh you know, maybe my upbringing, I mean, um, you know, it was, uh, I, I don't want to say it was a Catholic household because it was like, my, my dad wasn't like into organized religion. My dad, you know, he wanted me to, well, my brother and I to not, to, to get baptized in whatever religion we wanted to once we were older. He wanted us to be able to choose our religions, whereas my uh, mother wanted us baptized, um, you know, as soon as possible so that we could, um, then follow a Roman Catholic uh, tradition. And so I was kind of raised with that, but also with my dad's more like, um, you do what you want. And I don't know, he had more of like a Zen thing going on kind of, um, and you know, and, and there was all these different beliefs in the family, but it was, it was all kind of centered around Christianity and Catholicism. Um, and so with that tarot deck, even though I felt like I really wanted to bond with it and really wanted to get with it, there was that subconscious part of me that was like what I was doing was somehow evil or scary or wrong or I would, like a Ouija board, I would bring in like demons. Well, even with Ouija boards, you know, I thought that they were like something, you know, scary. And my mother bought my brother and I a Ouija board one year for Christmas. It was like, okay. <laughs> So that just kind of sat in my closet every now and then my mom was like, let's bust out the Ouija board Like it was a fun game, you know, I mean it was sold in the kids section at Toys R Us, you know, and under the board game So it's like, okay um, So yeah, uh, I had a really tough time it, it felt like it took so long to do a reading because I had to look literally look up every single card And what it means when it's in this part of the spread And I thought that there was only like these certain spreads that you could use because of the book and I don't know So I never really bonded with that deck and I always got the heebie-jeebies every time I used it um so yeah but I'm, I'm glad i stuck with it and finally got some decks that actually resonated question number four what methods did i or do i currently use to bond with my cards so now okay so let's say i got a brand new deck which this is not a new deck but let's say i did um and i would you know immediately take it out of the box and wrap it everything um i'd go through and really look at each and every card um, and then after that, I uh, usually light some Palo Santo or I light some sage or whatever other incense that I think would really go with this deck. And I totally just, you know, do a smoke cleansing of it. Um, I call in all the positive energies and I like to do a mental like um, any other energies that are connected with this deck are now gone. Um, you um, will help aid me in um, healing myself and others and give healing messages and loving messages. You are now connected, you know, to light source and things like that. Um, so it's, it's more of like things I say in my head as I'm cleansing it with the smoke. Um, after that, I'll do a little like there's like a little get to know you type spread that I do. Like, um, I'll pull a card. How do you see me? How do you see yourself? What are your strengths as a deck? Um, what will I get out of our negotiations together, our work together? When's the best time to work with you? And how will you challenge me as a deck? So that's, those are the cards that I pull. Um, and then after that, I just kind of like keep shuffling it, shuffling it so that I'm really like infusing it with my energy. Um, it'll be the deck that I carry along with me in my purse everywhere I go so that it's like always constantly with me. Um, I don't sleep with decks under my pillow. I mean, I have other things under my pillow like rocks and like little herb pillows, <laughs> little herb sachets and things like that, but just not my cards. Um, but they do sleep next to my bed. So they're like literally an arm's length away, you know, next to my bed. So brand new decks are always next to me or on top of my nightstand. And the very last question, is there anybody in my family who is a tarot reader or card reader? Um, not that I know of, but, um, you know, cause there's a lot of things they don't, I don't know, the family is like emotionally constipated. 
<laughs> like there's a lot of stuff that they don't talk about but I've heard bits and pieces here and there um, for instance my um, my father's mother my nana um, she was um, really good at seeing spirit and she was very vocal about it um, she was uh, she would talk to me about you know being able to touch things and know exactly um, you know who it was connected to and what basically the energy is that is around it um, my dad would just kind of poo poo that and it's just like that's your crazy nana you know um, that's like a Hispanic thing and like you know just you know no no um, and um, and then my dad would talk about his dad, um, who was from Cebu, my grandfather, who we just called Gypto. Um, and he um, was really good in the kitchen at like making herbs and things like that. And uh, he would say that we are Visayan and um, in a Visayan culture in Cebu, uh, they were known as like it translated into like witch doctors. Like they were the healers. They could make concoctions and herbs and they would heal the sick. Um, people would go to them for for healing or information and uh, my dad said that his father was like not shy about it and he would get so embarrassed because he's like you're in the United States now and you don't do that stuff and people will think you're weird people think I'm weird um, but yeah he said his father would just like if you had a nosebleed just boom boom you'd like do something shove it up your nose pull it out and all of a sudden the nosebleed was gone or he'd say here drink this if you're sick or he'd make this you know if, if you had this issue or or whatever it was he was just really good in the kitchen with all his like herbs and just knew how to use all that stuff um on my mother's side um her mother's mother so my grand my great grandmother um her name was madonna and uh she was irish catholic and um, because of her very Irish Catholic background, uh, she thought that the things that she could do um, was considered evil. So what she would do is she would actually read people's palms um, and she would be able to figure out like um, choices that people should take. People would go to her and say like, you know, I am down on my luck, what should I do? And she'd say, okay, this and this is gonna come up and you, it would be best if you did this. Um, every time there was a town lottery, she always won the town lottery because she always seemed to know the numbers. But somehow, even though she would do these things, she was also conflicted, like somehow it was bad. So she always gave the money away to charity. Like she never wanted to keep it. Um, she just gave it back to the city or um, every time people wanted to pay her for her palm reading services it was like no 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 no, because no this is actually like devil's work like I shouldn't do this um, and my grandmother um, she would often get like visions or feelings of things but she would also kind of poo-poo that too even though she was she would voice it she would just be like oh that's I don't know maybe that's just the devil speaking or you know something like that um, so yeah, I mean, it's on both sides of the family um, and it's just, I don't know, it's, and, and so it kind of created a conflict within me. But as far as like reading cards, I don't know anybody who read cards. I mean, maybe somewhere in my ancestral line they did. Um, but, um, and now that I tell my family, hey, you know, that I am a tarot card reader, I mean, they're a lot more cool with it. I don't know, it seems like everybody kind of relaxed on that and it's like, you know, I guess, I don't know because I am who I am like I'm just me I'm kind of quirky and goofy that it's like oh like they don't care that I do tarot cards it's like whatever so thank you my simple path for creating this lovely tag I had a fun time doing it um yeah and so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm gonna go back to using my cards now shocker <laughs> and if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up don't forget to click subscribe if you have any questions put that in the comment section below I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys enjoy your day peace love and chicken grease peace out <laughs> <laughs>